Hello, Michigan Realtors, and welcome back to the Letter of the Law. Since our last episode, Governor Whitmer has lifted the remaining express limitations on real estate practice. We are still faced with many of the continuing impacts of COVID-19 on clients, customers, and Realtors. As we discussed last time, the safety and comfort level of all parties remains essential to supporting this market. Now, many have asked whether or not, given the lifting of real estate restrictions, there is any need to continue using the COVID-19 hold harmless forms. It is our opinion that the usefulness of those forms remains so long as the pandemic persists. The primary purpose of the form is to ask sellers and buyers alike to recognize that they have a choice as to whether to allow or attend private showings. Also to acknowledge that the choice is being made by them and that they are not relying on the advice of their agents in making this decision. The forms also provide an important opportunity to educate the client on best practices. That said, the use of the form remains completely voluntary. Listing brokers should continue to follow the lead of their seller clients and following any requirements that the seller may have for private showings and open houses. Buyers agents should continue to communicate with buyers on the expectations of all sellers during this time. Now, many have asked how open houses should be conducted during this time. While the governor has rescinded the prohibition on open houses, there is still a requirement that all participants in an open house exercise six feet of social distancing and wear masks. Now, some have asked why masks are required for open houses and are only encouraged as a best practice for private listing appointments. It is our opinion that an open house is distinct as an enclosed public space and not a private listing appointment. Therefore, under the governor's existing order, there is a requirement that masks be worn. Additional questions on open houses center on the number of individuals allowed at any given time. There is no specific cap on the number of attendees. However, those in attendance need to maintain social distance. As such, the listing broker and seller should discuss the size and layout of the house to determine their own respective limit on the number in at a house at a given time. We have already heard from many brokerages that have been proactive in establishing protocol for open houses and catering to the wishes of the seller client. As best practices go, you'll want to focus on minimizing the likelihood of congested areas in the respective property and informing all sellers, first, prior to any scheduled showing or open house, please turn on all lights and leave interior doors, drapes, and blinds open. Now, this will ensure that anyone entering the home will not need to touch light switches, doorknobs, and prior to and after any showing or open house, clean and disinfect all frequently touched surfaces, such as doorknobs, handles, light switches, and countertops. Now, if you're representing buyers at open houses or private showings, you should encourage all buyers to maintain six-foot social distance at all times, Buyers also attending showings and visits should meet their agents at the property and wait in their car for the agents to arrive. Also, do not touch any surfaces in the property. Do not turn off lights or close interior doors. Do not share phones, pens, tablets with anyone attending the showing. Also, use hand sanitizer immediately and prior to entering the home and also upon exiting. Also, minimize the time physically present at the property. The above baselines will help prepare clients and customers for what to expect at a given property. Other common issues that we have been fielding over the last couple of weeks center on the ability to show tenant-occupied property. As you recall, previous restrictions did not allow for the showing of tenant-occupied property. However, the blanket prohibition on showing tenant-occupied property has also been rescinded. Going forward, these types of properties may now be shown subject to any requirements under the current lease. The prior limitation on short-term rentals has also been rescinded by the governor. Short-term rental properties may now be marketed without any state-imposed limitation. However, local restrictions may still be in force. We have already seen several local jurisdictions propose short-term rental restrictions in response to COVID-19. As the summer rental season is in full swing, it will be important for clients to understand what the local regulatory climate is and or where it is heading in the future. 
Michigan Realtors continues to advocate for common sense approaches that protect short-term rental rights as well as private property rights, while also balancing the need for meaningful enforcement for discourteous behavior. While many brokerages have started opening their doors in the last few weeks, the current executive order governing office safety makes it clear that real estate offices that are open for business must follow the governor's workplace rules. Now, one of the key requirements for offices of all types that open back up is that each office will develop its own COVID-19 preparedness and response plan. In an effort to help local associations and brokerages prepare for a return to the office, Michigan Realtors prepared a sample toolkit that you may use to develop your own preparedness and response plan. The goal of this resource is to provide brokerages and associations with the compliance tools required under the governor's workplace rules. This new toolkit gives offices a user-friendly template to personalize. As we move from remote workspaces back to more traditional office arrangements, meaningful and consistent implementation will be important. If your office is contemplating opening up to Realtors, employees, and members of the public, please utilize the toolkit to start off on the right foot. The toolkit is available at mirealtors.com on our industry resource page and includes a COVID-19 preparedness plan, a COVID-19 licensee employee questionnaire, and a COVID-19 visitor questionnaire. With that, thank you so much for tuning in and carrying this information on forward to your colleagues. Please stay safe out there and contact us with any questions that may arise. If you'd like to explore any of our on-demand CE options to knock out your legal CE requirements, don't hesitate to visit cemyway.com. As always, we wish you success in your business. Mm -hmm.